Hey, this is Marlon and welcome back to another episode of Future Steps Creative, the online business podcast that talks about content strategy primarily for marketing as well as your website and the strategy behind this for your own online platform. So we're talking about today using YouTube as a discovery and growth strategy. I'm going to be doing a few episodes on growth strategy at the top of the funnel, meaning that that point where you bring people in, they discover you and you bring them in to your ecosystem so you can convert them into leads at the bottom of the funnel which is the narrow end where only a few people come out versus the number of people that come in so we need to have activities that we do at the top of the funnel to bring those people in so youtube is one of my favorite ways of doing so and i think you should be utilizing it i love using it and it's a super powerful way to drive growth and discovery so i'm going to talk about First of all, the benefits of using YouTube or some of them anyway. And um, then I'm going to talk to you about how you can actually get started um, up, get up and running quickly with YouTube and start utilizing that as a plot platform. So with YouTube, you have several benefits. Now at its core, it is a, uh, skip my slide there. It is a search engine. And this is really important to understand. A lot of people view YouTube mainly as a social media platform. And although it has social media aspects to it in terms of the commenting, the likes and the subscribes and sharing, it is really a powerful search engine. It is the second most popular search engine in the world behind Google, which is its parent company. And this, that says a lot in itself. So you should be thinking, what content can I have on YouTube that is going to be search friendly, that's going to get discovered within my niche and help people to find my brand, find my business and come into my sales funnel. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I mention sales or marketing funnel or conversion funnels, I've done episodes on that in the past. So just check through. I'll see if I can leave a link to any of those. But the principle is you bring lots of people in at the top, as I mentioned before, where they find you. But as people go through your process where you try and convert them into sales, not everyone's going to convert, but you want to try and convert as many of those as possible into sales or sign ups or whatever it is that you're looking to have as the goal uh, for your leads. So you want to utilize the search functionality as much as possible um, and be able to do content that is search friendly for YouTube. Now, the second thing is you are likely to find your audience no matter what it is that you do. You're likely to find your audience on YouTube simply because YouTube has such diversity with its users and it's got so many users. It's got over 2 billion users worldwide and um, there are different age ranges, different demographics. There are various, uh, there's a wide range of people that you can find um, on YouTube. So chances are your audience is going to be there. So you should be paying attention to YouTube for that reason as well. Now, YouTube is a great way for you to build rapport and trust as well as likability more easily online, simply because you're able to connect better with your audience because they can see and hear you. Now, this is true for video as a whole, but YouTube, again, because of the um, usership or the user um, numbers that it's got and the ability for you to kind of have that interaction with them there in comments and things like that, it's a great way for you to build that trust and likability and get them to um, connect with your brand much more easily than in the written form or in other forms. As long as they can see and hear you, people are able to make um, that you know connection to say whether or not they want to do business with you just on the back of that. YouTube is um, a much better place to get gain traction than on Google in terms of search um, rankings. And I say this because, and this is my opinion, by the way, it might be different for other people, but I say this to say that with Google search, it's pretty much you have to be on page one and you have to rank high on page one in order to get those clicks coming through to your website. And that's just the end of the story. If you want to get organic traffic, that's how you have to do it on Google. You have to have a really good article, a really good blog post um, or a service page or product page that is going to um, warrant Google showing you above everyone else on the search engines. If your competition, as, as in the people that are also trying to show up for the same search terms, the same search phrases or keywords, if their content is better than yours or if their website is more authoritative than yours, that's a thing that Google used to look at how um, much authority the site have in terms of is it a site they can trust, um, what's the track record, how long have they been around, all, the, all of these things determine whether or not your 
pages show up when somebody shows uh, types in a search above somebody else's, right? So with YouTube, you have a much better chance of getting your videos showing up in front of people simply because of suggested search. Suggested search is the list of videos that comes up to the right hand side if you're on a desktop on um, a video that's playing. So if you're watching a video about a particular topic, YouTube is going to suggest other videos that are related to that. And you could utilize this by um, making sure that you're positioning your position, you position your content, your video to piggyback off of popular videos. So maybe you can't beat those videos outright because they've already cemented their um, footing into whatever the subject area is or the actual topic and you can't necessarily outrank them in that sense but you could at least show up in the suggested videos and that happens all the time for smaller videos that really it's not down to subscribership or anything like this it's down to whether or not you have a relevant topic so think about the power of this and how you can utilize this um, as a strategy to target um, the suggested videos with your headlines and with the type of videos that you make. The next thing is that YouTube can also help you rank in Google. In case you didn't notice, YouTube videos actually show up high in the search results on page one. It's actually above, last time I checked, the, the organic rankings for the, the pages for blog posts and written content like that. YouTube videos actually show up above those. I have several videos that actually come up um, for uh, other brands that I operate and things like that. And it's really helpful when you can get traffic from Google as well as from YouTube. So you're getting it in YouTube and you're getting it in, in Google at the same time. So that's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. So that's a really good strategy. If you don't have blog posts or if you don't necessarily want to do blog posts immediately, videos definitely um, can get ranked. So the next thing that I want to talk about here is the fact that even though videos might be deemed as difficult to make and things like that, a lot of people put video off because they think that it's so much work. It can be, but it can also be fun. It's really fun to make videos. Once you've worked out your process, once you've figured out how you want to operate, um, how you want to make your videos, it can really be fun. So it's something that you need to um, look at and see how you can make a certain type of video that's best suited for your audience and for you so that it's, it does, doesn't become a burden. You can actually make really good videos in different styles and different formats. So that's something you may need to look at. So now let's look at how to get started. So getting started in YouTube, first of all, you're going to need to set up your channel. A channel is absolutely free. It comes with your Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you already have a YouTube account. All you need to do is sign into your Google, uh, sign into YouTube with your Google account and you can start setting up your channel. There are some steps that you need to go through and they'll walk you through this. I've done mine ages ago. So the steps might be different, but I remember having to verify the channel. I think they did it either through a phone call or some other means. You have to start then uploading videos. And it once a channel becomes active, then um, it signals to Google that you're in business and your, your videos can actually start showing up straight away. But there are some restrictions um, when you just get started. Just check with those. If you're not sure, just go onto YouTube and type in how to start a YouTube channel. I'm sure they're going to be really beginner level videos, uh, basic videos there that you can actually um, follow to know what the current um, strategy or the current uh, processes, I should say, for starting a YouTube channel. There's things like channel art and things like that. Those can come later. I would say set the tech up and get things working the way you want it. And then you can concentrate on those branding aspects and so on and so forth. Um, that, the tech side of it, speaking of that, brings me to the camera. You need to have a camera of some sort and possibly screen recording software, depending on the type of videos that you'd be making. You have videos like um, we are just the only person on camera, you're a talking head and you're presenting something with no, no other visuals, you need a dedicated camera for that. Now you could use um, a dedicated camera or you could use what you've got already. A mobile phone um, camera is really good enough these days to make a really good video in terms of how it looks and so on. And um, you could use a webcam. Right now I'm using a webcam and um, this is capturing um, a picture that I'm going to put in one of the corners of the screen so you can actually see me. Um, but I've also got a presentation slide here from Google Slides on my screen. So this kind of helps with uh, breaking things up and it just depends on how you want to do it. You could do it without your face on camera and just do it with your, your voice. Um, but either way, 
people need to make a connection with you. So I would say the best thing is to either be on camera yourself or have your voice on camera. Uh, if you're on camera, you need to have good lighting. Uh, you could use the room light. Right now I'm just using the room light here, but you could also have like an external lighting, uh, simple LED light that you could have near your um, camera, uh, just pointing on you, the subject. If you have a bright light in the background and you don't have a light on you, this can actually make you look dark and it just blows out the shot. It doesn't look good. It's not a good look. So make sure you get good lighting. That's really important. Even if you have a camera that's not so great, lighting can make the difference, right? It makes you come out way more professional looking. Um, now, this is a really, really important part. Audio. You need to have a decent microphone if you're going to be presenting to camera um, or doing voiceovers and things like that. The, the least, uh, at the very least, you can have a headset from like your mobile phone plugged into your camera or into your laptop. So you can actually pick up the audio directly from the source and not use the built-in mic on your camera or on your laptop and have it a mile away. It just sounds terrible. Um, in fact, if you don't even have a great picture and you have really decent audio, people are more likely to be engaged with your video. If the audio is terrible and you have a really crystal clear picture, it might look good, but people are going to be turned off and um, they're going to go to another video because they can't hear what's happening clearly. And it's quite annoying if you have background noise and things like that going on. So just think about these things when you're um, thinking about making a um, video. The next point is uh, you need to have a basic understanding of how to present to make your video interesting and engaging. This is something that you'll need to kind of learn and pick up as you go. Uh, you can study other videos that you find interesting and you want to make the same level of quality. Um, study those videos, see what it is you like about them and what keeps you watching them. And you could implement some of those strategies into your um, own videos. Now, you have to practice in order to get good. You have to be bad to get good. And your bad might be better than somebody else's bad or worse than somebody else's bad. But the fact is we all start at some level of bad before we then get to the good stuff and, you know, be competent on camera or be competent at speaking. It doesn't just come overnight. It comes with practice, practice, practice. The more videos you put out, the better at it you become. And you could even rehearse just making the videos before you publish them and see how it comes out. And then you can go and critically look at those videos and say, OK, these are the things that I need to work on. And then when you actually go and shoot it next time, you know what not to do or what to do. Don't look at these people that have been making videos for 10 years or for however long they've been on YouTube or making videos um, in general. And they have really good presentation skills. They have high production values with um, value with, uh, you know, top end cameras and things like that. Don't look at that. You can make the videos um, with based on where you're at now and people will see that progress and be inspired by that progress. As long as you're delivering value, that's first and foremost what you need to be doing. You need to be delivering value to your audience in terms of teaching, in terms of sharing, whatever it is that you're doing on the video so they can actually get something out of it. That's the main thing. It's not about you. So you need to put your ego aside and put your um, inhibitions aside and actually think about the people that you're going to help. They're the ones that you're making the videos for and that's the most important thing and you could improve over time and get feedback and that's how you build an audience um, and improve as you go. So the next thing I want to mention here is to work out your process. Process means everything. If you're just stumbling into making videos and you're not prepared, you're not actually outlining your video to know what you're going to um, talk about or how things you know, are going to flow, you're going to probably end up having um, frustrations in terms of how long you take to produce a video and how well it goes and so on. So you need to have a process that way you can actually relax um, and, and create videos more efficiently. So you can publish more, publish more efficiently and gain more traction more quickly. So um, make sure you take into account all of these things and just get started. That's the main thing. Most people um, think about doing this and they think, okay, um, how am I going to do this? What am I going to have to do to get started? But you have everything you already need. So to recap, YouTube can help you great gain strategy, gain more traction for your business um, easily online um, by making a better connection with your audience. YouTube can help you rank higher in search results. 
you can start with the equipment that you already have, as I've already mentioned, and it can be fun. All you have to do is work out the best process. Now, if you're an online entrepreneur, a freelancer, or a small business owner, and you're looking to build and grow your own online platform, I've started to put together some resources over on futurestepscreative.com that's going to help you get started or grow what you've already started. It's an online community that I'm putting together with some trainings and some interactions so you can actually ask questions and get help and so on and so forth. So I look forward to seeing you there. I'm excited with uh, for this and I want to get you over there. You can start for free right now and start utilizing some of the uh, resources that I already have there. So just head over to futurestepscreative.com and I'll see you there. That's all I've got for you in this episode. In the meantime, have faith, believe in yourself and take action and I'll see you next time.